This year at Mobile World Congress, Kalis is offering cross-band combiners for feed system combining, as well as our new innovative range default technology for passive intermodulation testing. The combiners shown here are ones that are used for combining multiple frequencies together at a cell site in order to take advantage of the existing feed systems at those sites. So for the example here, this is a quad band combiner that allows you to combine frequencies ranging from 698 megahertz all the way up to 2700 megahertz to combine those frequencies together at a site. So if I was a network operator that was going to be deploying LTE 2600 on an existing system or possibly deploying LTE 800 onto an existing system, this combiner allows you to put those frequencies together onto the same feed system in order to take advantage of the capex and opex savings of using that existing infrastructure. At the top of the tower, we have another filter that allows you to then separate those frequencies in order to divide and put those frequencies back on the appropriate antenna port. The filters and combiners that we make are not only low insertion loss and high isolation between ports, but they're also designed to survive the harsh tower top environment. Likewise, they have low passive intermodulation which becomes critically important when I start combining multiple frequencies of multiple bands together and putting them onto the same feed system at a cell site. The Kalis Range Default Module is an accessory that adds on to an existing passive intermodulation test set. So if you already own an A or B series PIM test set from Kalis, you can add Range Default Technology as an, as an extra option for that test set. Range Default Technology has been implemented as a new mode to our existing IQA test instrument. So in normal PIM testing mode, if I press the button to perform a PIM test, this is a new feature, the fact that it's now doing a return loss sweep to check the return loss of the system that we're testing before it turns on the high-powered amplifiers. In this particular case, the return loss was a minus 28 dB, very, very good, which allowed the amplifiers to turn on. And as you can see, I'm now performing a standard PIM test. If I want to turn on the noise, I can... I can turn on the buzzer and, and see a, or hear a, a sound that is proportional to the magnitude of the PIM being generated. Range default has been implemented as a new mode on the IQA test instrument. So if I press the mode button, I now can access all the modes available on this test instrument. The first is our standard passive intermodulation test mode. The next mode is time trace mode. So in this mode, it allows me to view the magnitude of the PIM versus time. Spectrum monitor mode allows me to monitor what's happening as far as the signals coming in from the outside environment to look for interference. A new RTF mode is the mode that allows us to pinpoint the location of passive air modulation faults as well as compare that information to return loss faults. To start an RTF analysis, I hook it up to the system and press the button. Once again, it's performing a return loss sweep to verify that we're not connected to an open circuit or possibly firing RF into someone who's at the end of the line doing a repair. I now go into the RTF sweep, which is the passive, the passive intermodulation sweep. And now the analysis is complete. On the system that we have set up here, we have six meters of cable, a PIM fault, another six meters of cable, and another PIM fault. And if you look at this, you can tell the first peak is showing at a distance of 6.4 meters at a magnitude of minus 87 dBm. Toggle to the next one, another PIM source measuring neg 90 dBm at a distance of 12 meters. If you look at the accuracy, a known location of 6 meters measured 6.4 and a known location of 12 meters measured 12 meters exactly. When I look at the return loss, once again, all I have to do is press now the return loss button. And now I'm looking at the distance to return loss of the same measurement. More interesting is when I now look at the overlay feature. This is one of the key features of range default technology, is the ability now to look at PIM faults and return loss reflections in the same setup. And in this setup, you can tell that at zero, which is right at the output of the RTF module, I have a return loss spike. At the point where I have the inline PIM source, I have very, very good return loss, almost no reflections occurring at that location. But you can see the spike that there is PIM occurring. And then finally at the end of the line where we have our, our loaded PIM source, 
you can see that there's a rise in PIM as well as a rise in return loss. The value of this to an operator is it provides the ability to take a known reflection, such as the end of the line, and compare the PIM sources that you're measuring in distance relative to that known location. So in this case, instead of having to work from the bottom down to determine the location of faults, we have the ability to work from the, from the, from the top down, which gives us the ability to measure how far from a known reflection is the PIM fault that we're trying to repair. This capability allows operators to much more quickly find and eliminate PIM problems in the field.